Hallelujah. 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 Father, we just come to you. God, right now in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We recognize that you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the one who makes ways out of no ways. Father, in the name of Jesus, we recognize that you have the ability to make ways in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just yield ourselves unto you now. Father, have your way, have your way, have your way in this moment, have your way in this place. God, you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We will lift up our eyes unto you. We will come lift up our eyes unto you because um, our help comes from you, O Lord, the Lord uh, who made heaven and earth, Lord God. We acknowledge you now as a righteous king. Hallelujah. You are the one that made a way out of no way, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, God, we just surrender ourselves, God. We surrender ourselves in this moment, in this place. God, have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Come on in. Come in. Come in, Holy Spirit. Come in in the name of Jesus. Come on in the room right now, Lord. Come in this place, oh God. We invite you, we invite you into this moment. Oh Lord, oh Lord, have your way, oh God. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy. Hey, oh Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, 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 Jesus, hey, oh Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, beyond the edge, come on, family, let's go beyond the edge today. Let's push out a little further. Let's, let's, let's launch into the deep. Let's cast our nets out a little further. Let's push away from the coast and trust God in the deep. Beyond the edge. Come on, come on. Go with me today. Let's worship the Lord. Let's push out from the coast. Hallelujah. Launch out into the deep. Beyond the edge. Past the edge expectations beyond the glory of ourselves to the glory of our God beyond the edge past the expectations beyond the glory of ourselves to the glory of our God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, Lord. Have Sing that with me, family. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. One more time, say, have your way, Lord. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. 
have your way. Hallelujah, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Lord. Have your way. We invite you. Hallelujah, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Lord. Have your way. We invite you. Hallelujah, Lord. Have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. We invite you. Have your way. Hallelujah. Have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just felt like we needed to have a time of worship. Hallelujah. Just from the heart right there and giving it to our Lord and to our Savior, to our King. And I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to walk into this assignment in this moment to be available, to be used by you. Father, I yield. Have your way. God, I pray every heart will be uh, able to receive open, uh, ready to receive your word on today. And every ear will be open to hear your voice on today, Father. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. And I just pray, Father, that your word would come across in such a way that life, lives will be changed and transformed. And those who do not know you as Lord and Savior will be drawn to you, Jesus to have a relationship with you and to grow into the things of God like never before. Father, have your way in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited, you guys. Can you tell I'm excited? I am excited. And the Lord just had me really just kind of studying and looking at uh, and reflecting on the message that we spoke on a couple of weeks ago. Um, And we were talking about edifying uh, the Lord. Edify Me was in a part of the series called Edify Me and transitioning into the next part called Aim Your Eyes Up. So let me back up for a second and and just reflect for those who may be here for the first time. And just to kind of remind everyone, we are in a series called Breathe. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Mm. I had to take a moment, y'all. Just take a breath. Because every breath that we breathe is connected to that breath that God gave us when he breathed the breath of life and man became a living soul. And so we're in this series called Breathe. And Breathe is an acronym. And it, it stands for B-R-E-A-T-H-E, break free, remember scripture, edify me, aim your eyes up, (laughs) think in advance, hear my voice, and enlarge my territory. B-R-E-A-T-H-E, breathe. And so we're we are uh, transitioning from edify me into aim your eyes up. And it's kind of a difficult thing to do because they kind of go so well together because in order for us to aim our eyes up, we have already, we have to already have made the the decision um, to posture ourselves in the place we, we, where we have edified and made large, uh, magnified the name of God, the name of Jesus. And so when we've edified him and magnified him and made his name great in our lives and in our hearts and in our thought processes, then aiming our eyes up above anything else that's going on in the world, in our lives, around our communities should not be a difficult thing to do because we're already edifying him. Amen. 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 Y'all. Uh, I, I'm going to keep going. My nose feel a little stuffy all of a sudden, but I'm going to keep going and pressing through this because I want to talk about 
something today that's just been on my mind since I woke up this morning. Um, the Lord just been kind of, uh, I've been tossing around these things that I've been hearing from the Lord in these two, two words. All right. I, and I think this might be the sermon title. Uh, you can write this down, but this is what I've been hearing. Okay. Okay. Here it is. Uncommon. Excuse me. I didn't say that right. Uncommonly clothed. Uh, let me say that again. Uncommonly clothed. All right. Um, clothed, you know, to put on clothing, to be clothed uncommonly clothed. And so my mentality of where that came from is the Lord started dealing with me and helping me to understand. And I want to say the same thing to you to help you recognize that you are not common. You are not common. When you are uh, walking under the authority of the true and living God, when you are walking in the presence and the privilege and the opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are not common. You are uncommon. And when you're uncommon, you have access to an unlimited, all-powerful source in our Heavenly Father who gives us the opportunity to access things that are not common. Come on. Uncommonly clothed. Uncommonly clothed. And one of the things the Lord began to do with me as he was taking me down this journey of helping me to recognize to open my eyes, to awaken me to the place where I began to uh, uh, succumb, surrender, give in to, relax, and become conditioned in um, being common. Yep, that's what he had to do. He had to show me, Pam, right here, that thought process, right here in this particular part of your life, it's common. I wanted to say communism, but I'm scared that someone might thought I would say communism. So let's just, you know, stick with being common. <laughs> but he had to bring an awareness to me that I somewhere along the way suppressed, come on, the part of my life that had the access to be uncommon because I was allowing a certain thing to control my future from my past in a common kind of way. And that common thing that was hindering me from being uncommon, who in the power and the authority of God, of which I have been clothed in by righteousness, come on, that common thing was hurt. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Do you know to walk around in hurt is a common thing? Come on, I can make it simple. Turn on a television. Look at the money that's being made by television shows like Maury and and it was Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Uh, all those shows that are that have a weekly audience viewerships off of the common uh, connection of hurt. They're making money and entertainment off of people's hurt. Yeah, that, that's my simple example. That's, I'm going to keep it simple just like that. But you might say, well, I've seen that show and I see the kind of nonsense that's going on and I ain't dealing with that kind of... Mm, see, but see, that's why I want to challenge you today because if you can't recognize hurt is hurt and you put it on a scale, well, my life ain't like that, but you're not dealing with the little piece, that little, that little, bit, that little bit piece of hurt right there, then you're allowing that little... That little that little piece of right there that I ain't dealt with. I ain't deal with that yet. That little, but a little becomes much. It only takes a little bit to leaven the whole lump. I'm talking about common, come on, <laughs> hurt. The Lord said, Pam, you are uncommon, <laughs> but you're allowing a common thing to pull you back from what I've given you an unlimited access to. And he said, there's a, just a little, a little bit of hurt right here. Now he probably didn't say it like that, but that's 
how I began to look at it because I kind of pushed it to the side. I was like, ah, uh, you know, I'm all right. I'll be all right. Uh, I can move on with my life and live past that. But what I didn't know was what God revealed. We talked about this not too far back in this series, Breathe, in the break free section, that there's some things that God has to make us aware. He has to give us an awareness to reveal, uncover, my goodness, take the covers back up. Come on, pull the covers back of some things that we didn't realize was hiding under the surface. And those things was controlling the outcome of our future because we are uncommon people serving an uncommon God by allowing a common thing to have control of the choices, the decisions, and the thoughts that we make. Ooh, Lord, I gladly share this with you today because I allow that hurt to prevent me from doing a lot of things in my life that I could actually be thriving in right now. And I've made a lot of decisions based around that hurt to prevent me from being exposed to the memory of that hurt because I didn't want to deal with it. So I didn't even realize that that decision was ultimately a decision that was controlling my future because I was trying to avoid doing certain things and just so I wouldn't have to come face to face with that hurt ever again. I wanted to just move past it. <clears throat> and even now while I'm telling this to you and I'm trying, I'm sharing this with you and I want to be open with you, I'm even reflecting on whether or not I should talk about it. But I think I'm going to be a part of this experience today and, and walk in my break free moment because I can't sit here and say, be uncommonly clothed and still keep the common thing common. Ooh, come on. So I'm going to tell you what it was. I had a situation happen to me and it became um, exposed or put on blast on Facebook. And because this situation happened um, and the people involved behind it were connected to me on Facebook, I stopped using Facebook. Now I still have the page. I could not bring myself to take it down because it was too valuable because of the connections I do have that are good connections, good, good godly people that I need to be able to access. But what I did is I turned down my availability, availability and my accessibility and I made myself available and accessible by choice when I wanted to because I didn't want the other people to have access to me again via Facebook. So for years and years and years and years, I stopped using Facebook. And then I started to notice whenever I would see a picture of these individuals or um, I would have a, I'd be like, swipe, hurry up, squeak. Uh, and because I avoided the place, my God, where the hurt was connected to, I didn't realize I was also avoiding the, the, the issue in another way. So when I would see their faces, when I was scrolling through, I would, it would impact me because I had been ignoring, come on, I had turned off, but I didn't deal with that hurt. And so seeing a person's picture should not have prompt, should not have bothered me, but it did. And then I went on and ignored that for years. I was like, well, I just won't get back on. That's why I ain't on it right there. See, I don't even want to deal with that. I don't have to see them. So why I got to, I don't want to see them here. Uh -uh. But I never dealt with the hurt. I never dealt with that thing. And so the Lord was like, you're hurting. And that's a common thing that's pulling you away from the uncommon place that I've called you to. The uncommon assignment that's on your life. And it's keeping you down. I say, okay, God, I don't want to be, I don't want to have access 
to an all-powerful, unlimited, powerful source that is my Savior, my God, my Heavenly Father. I don't want to. I don't want to limit the glory of God. Come on, in my life because of a common thing. And so I'm more. My heart is more in a place where I want what God more. I want what God wants for me more than anything else. And so I said, I made the decision. I reached out to someone that I can trust to pray with me. Um, I let them know what the situation was and that I needed to ask the Lord for forgiveness. And I want you to hold me accountable to um, staying in this lane until I can break free. And I'm telling you, go back and listen to those messages. I was preaching from what God was teaching me in that moment to break free. And I broke free. I broke free because I trusted the word of God that came to me that said I was uncommon. God, if you said said that I'm uncommon and there's a common thing that's holding me back, then I trust you at your word. I'm going to step into the area that hurt me so that I can give it back to you, so I can release it to you. And I had to trust God at his word. I had to look at the scriptures again. I had to say them again and remember, whoo, come on, who I am and God. And, I, and that, that thing has no authority over me because it's under my feet, my goodness, because his spiritual authority is delegated onto me. And I have the ability to use the words in my mouth, his word, and speak and declare a thing. Whoo. And come up against that thing in my life. And re- first I had to humble myself, repent for not having faith enough to overcome that. And then yield myself, break free so I could breathe, breathe. Because I am uncommonly clothed. Come on, come on. And I'm telling you, I didn't even fully understand it all the way. Even then, I just believed God. I just believed what he said. (laughs) And sometimes it just takes believing what he said and to be obedient to what he said and to do what he said. And then the blessings of God will be released on your life so that you can walk into that uncommon as my mom constantly reminds me and speaks over my life that we have uncommon unusual favor and the uncommon unusual favor that God has released to us we can walk in it at all times but there's a limitation that we put on what we have access to because of our own thoughts and our own understanding that we lean on that makes us common when we're uncommon people. Man, help me, Lord. So as I started thinking about this uncommonly clothed, how did I get to this clothed part? Well, I started thinking about what is it that I've allowed myself to be connected to and what is it that I'm putting on and what was I wearing that I didn't even realize it or better yet here's here's where it really came from what did what was covered up remember I said he had to make me aware so there was a covering up and I was reading Haggai 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 I was reading Haggai (laughs) um chapter one and two was only two chapters right and I was in Haggai chapter one. I was reading two and I said, I went back to one. I want to make sure I got full understanding of what I was reading here. And I was reading Haggai chapter one. And uh, let me see if I can pull up my little outline I had here. This is when my mind really, really, really started to pull on some things here. Let me just read the scripture. All right. So in Haggai, Haggai, Verse one, in the second year of Darius, the king in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord unto Haggai, the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, let me stop for a moment because those word, those names are hard to, dip, uh, hard to explain, but let me tell you who they are so I can keep moving. Zerubbabel and Joshua, 
were two people that uh, uh, when the, the people of God had been um, taken away captive into Babylon because they were um, coming, they were going against the covenant of God and doing things, idolatry and turning away from his ways. He allowed them to go into captivity into Babylon. Now they were there 70 years. Okay. And in that time period, um, they, they, um, after the Babylonian, uh, rule was taken over by the Persians. Okay. The Persians took over Babylon. They allowed God's people to leave. You don't have to stay here. You can go back to your, um, to Jerusalem, but Jerusalem had been destroyed. It was, um, in what waste because the Babylonians came in, took the people into exile, destroyed the city, destroyed the temple, right? So the Persians come in, they take over Babylon and say, okay, y'all, y'all can go, y'all can go back. So when those who were left, the people out of, after that 70 years, those who were left under the leadership of Zerubbabel and Joshua, they led the people who wanted to go back, back to Jerusalem, all right? So these are the two people that we'll see um, being referred to here in Haggai, all right? So when I get to, when I, as I'm reading it and I get to their names, I'm just going to kind of jump through it, all right? So um, in the verse two, Haggai chapter one, verse two, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These pe this people say, the time has not come that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord unto Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. You eat, and you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You, you're clothed. Um, you clothe ye. There, there is none warm, and you have that you and he that earneth wages earneth not earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain, bring the wood, build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. So I want to stop there for a moment, and um, I just want to point out a couple of things here, right? So the Lord is saying to them, hey, look, all right, you guys have left exile. I made a way for you to come out of exile and to return back to Jerusalem. But since you've been here rebuilding the city, you've been focused on rebuilding things of you. Like you've been focusing on making the city cool and great and building your houses and doing all that stuff and, you know, working the land and making sure you have food to eat. But you haven't like when you going to rebuild my temple. And that's what's going on here. Um, and so when the Lord used Haggai, the prophet, to bring an awareness, hey, guys, hold up, back up. Um, yeah, I need y'all to consider your ways. I need y'all to, to kind of take a, a step back and kind of look at this. You're busy making sure you have what you need for yourselves. But when are you going to attend to my house? And that's when my mind started going to this un uncommonly clothed. They, because the words here said in, in verse, which verse was it? Verse four, Haggai 2, verse four. Um, is it time for you to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? Sealed houses. Um, you made sure that thing is right. Got it all covered. You got covering over you, you make sure you got your stuff straight, you, you protect it, you know, you put on what you needed to do, um, you know, you got your house, you, you in this little, it's covering you, right, you got your house that's covering you, keeping you safe from the wind and the rain, the elements, you go in and out every day, you know, you doing your thing, you living in your, your house, when are you going, when are you going to address my house, and the Lord started showing me how many of us are so focused and it's, ugh, Lord help me Jesus. It's a subtle thing. It's a, a, a <laughs> it's a subtle focus. I, I, oh, help me Holy Spirit. How do I say it? Because we, we still need to eat every day. 
we got to take care of our children. And, and for those who have little ones, they, their pampers need to be changed. They need to be fed, to be washed, to be cleansed. Um, those who have a little, children are a little older than that, four or five-year-old schools, they being homeschooled right now, they need your attention, um, a whole lot of that. And there's so many hours in a day that these things that we need for daily life, and that has to be done, but somehow we get caught up in our day-to-day doings that we bring more attention and focus unto how we're clothing ourselves, taking care of our house. But what about his house? What about his house? Have your way in me. Have your way in me. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it because it's all about you it's all about you jesus have your way in me have your way in me and so This house, this place, where we have chosen to allow Jesus to reside in, we commonly neglect as we take care of this place. And it's not something that we do on purpose. We're just living, but we're not just living of ourselves anymore when We say, Jesus, have your way in me. Come live in me. Rest, rule, and abide in me. Allow your presence and your glory. Come on. So we have to be aware of the common things in our lives that pull us out of our uncommon stature. And remember that we have been clothed in righteousness, that we have on the garments of praise. Hallelujah that we have the opportunity to wear the presence of God on our lives. The glory of the Lord rests upon us like a robe. And we have the responsibility to be uncommonly clothed so that those who are out there in common lives can see the light of Christ upon you. Whoo, come on now. Have your way in me. So, Lord, forgive us for making your uncommon common. When we um, are so focused on our house that we forget that this is your house. This is your temple. And so the Lord was like challenging me. Consider your ways. Build my house, and when you obey and build, then I will be with you. And so I want to remind you that as you make the choice today to go from the common to the uncommon, and help me, let me help you with this. Let me say this right now. If you are a child of the living God and you have made the choice to, to allow him to have his way in you and he rests ruling about you, he is your Lord and Savior, you are uncommonly clothed. So that means at some point you made the decision to be obedient to the will and the desire of God. Therefore, he is with you. So when you obey and build and God is with you because of your obedience, then you have to be remember that your 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 day to day routine has to start. With your eyes on him. Your day-to-day routine has to start with making him large, magnifying him, edifying him, because there's a place where we have to go from here to here. And the only way we can get there is through worship, through word, through prayer, through the constant 
uh, uh, reminding of ourselves, putting in remembrance of who we are, that, that Jesus is Lord over my life every day. Consider your ways, consider your ways, consider your ways. Um, so the Lord was just, you know, as I was looking through this and, and just and, and kind of going through the scriptures, um, I saw this point where he was challenging them to recognize that they were still in covenant with rebellion. The reason why the people were in exile in the first place is because there was rebellion against the covenant that God established with them. So they went from having a covenant with God to having a covenant with rebellion. Come. Sin will keep you in a common place and sin will drive you to a place of rebellion. They were still in covenant with rebellion, even though they got set free. They came back with the same thoughts and mindset. And God was like, all right, look, man, I see y'all. I see, I see that now, you know, he, he gave the word to Haggai. Y'all need to consider your ways. I need you to stop building your house up and focus on building mine. And until you do that, all that you put your hands to do will not bring forth what you think is going to bring forth that everything you've been working on and you're trying to figure out why it's not done yet and why it's been so hard. Well, let's consider your ways. Are you putting that before God? Are you putting that before what he's calling you to do? Are you, mm, come on. That's not the source. That's going to, mm, that thing that you're trying to do is not the source to getting to where you need to be. What God is calling you to do is to come to him and he's the source that feeds what you think is the source that provides what you need for your body. Mm -hmm. Ooh, boy, help me. <laughs> he, he wants you to be focused on trusting him as the source. So you need to become back into right standing and recognize where your covenant really is, where your connection really is, where your agreement really is. And that's with him and his word. But if you're still allowing sin to dictate common areas and common thoughts, then you might still be in covenant with something that needs to be broken off your life. And so even though God gave the word to Haggai for them to go and build and they did it, they were convicted and reminded to respond to God and they responded. Then he had to deal with them again and say, hey, but wait a minute, y'all doing this, but your motives aren't right. It's not, it's not pure. And so the things that you're expecting to happen is not happening because you need, you need to deal with, are you still carrying some, um, some common things here? And so I, I was like, okay, God, you're saying consider your ways. And I see where there was still this covenant with rebellion. And so these are the questions that came to mind that I want to challenge you today. Are you still in covenant with rebellion? Uh, are you still in covenant with some common thing? I mean, you know, look at your house, look at your life. Look at your thoughts. Look at your body. Are you still in covenant with rebellion? Are you still eating what you want versus what you need to be eating so that you can be a good steward over your body? Are, are, are you in covenant with common things? Are you still thinking, of, still thinking those thoughts but not willing to surrender them, surrender those thoughts to God and his will and word for your life are, are are you still in covenant with some common things um are you still connected with something that god told you to separate from are, are, are you still in covenant with some common things are you still sneaking out and doing that thing are you still saying that when no one is around are you still saying those words that you shouldn't be saying 
when no one is around to correct you, are you still saying those things out of your mouth that shouldn't be coming out your mouth? Uh, are you still in covenant with some common things? What are you making covenant with in your disobedience? Because if we're still in disobedience, we could be in danger of being in covenant with some common thing. The Lord is challenging you. He's challenging me. Consider your ways. And I challenge you to take today to take a review. I challenge you today to take a review and rebuke anything that is not like God that has attached itself to you. I'm going to say that again. Review and rebuke. Review anything that is not like God that has attached itself to you. Now, I was studying the word glorified, glorified, glorified. I know there's glory and to glorify and then glorified, glorified. So I was like, okay, the suffix at the end of glorified, F-I-E-D. Uh, I wonder if that has a meaning. So I went looking at that suffix, F-I-E-D, and it means to make something to become like what the word is attached to. Let me say it again. The suffix F-I-E-D means to make something to become like what the word is attached to. So when I, when I say I'm challenging you, challenging you today to review and then rebuke anything that is not like God that has attached itself to you, I'm also challenging you to get in the posture to where you can be... Mm, to get in a posture to where God is glorified in your obedience to his word. Because what we need to do is to begin to do things that will make the word of glory to be, come on, to take that. We want it to be glorified, to make something to become like what the word it is attached to. We don't want that thing to hang on us and make us commonfied. No, we want to get in a posture where God is being glorified in our obedience so that he can get the glory from our lives. What have you allowed to be attached to you? What are you in covenant with? Is God being glorified by your obedience? Mm, mm, mm. Come on, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Um, you got to go from the source <laughs> to the destination. You have to go from this place where God is pulling you up He's making you aware. He's giving you his word. He's giving you opportunity to respond and to build and to edify him and to lift him up so that he can be glorified in your obedience. It said here in the scripture back over in Haggai, verse seven, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain, bring the wood, build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. And they did it, and he was glorified. And when he was glorified in their obedience, that's when he said, I am with you. Now I'm with you, because you got things in the right order. Now you are uncommonly close. I want you guys to understand there are some things that are that are magnified. There are some things that are great. There are some amazing things happening in and out and through your lives. It's because you have chosen to obey God. And because of that, you are uncommon. So if you are able to identify, my mother constantly reminds me of the word of God that says, when you ID a thief, uh, he has to restore what's been stolen from you. And you got to review, identify, the thief that's trying to make you common so you can walk in the uncommon, unusual favor of God in your life. Come on, come on, come on. Woo. So today, as I was worshiping the Lord and, and, and just putting this all back to him and just basking in it, the Lord said to me, 
after I released words of worship unto him and I, I, I repented and I asked the Lord to forgive me and I thanked him for the opportunity to come up out of what was and to walk fully into. Come on, I'm, I'm just trying to give you all examples of how I just pulled it, poured my heart out as worship unto the Lord. And his response to me was this, and I'm going to say the same thing to you. As you respond in worship, the Father seek of such to worship him in spirit and in truth. When you release his word and you release his worship and you release his praise from your lips, descending from the heavens, past the firmament, into the atmosphere, encasing your body, clothed in righteousness. His word will prevail for he is a righteous king. And in any area in your life that appeared to be common, when you yield and surrender that over to him, his uncommon glory will clothe you and take you into a place where no man can do a thing like God. There will be doors that men will try to shut, but God will open. There will be doors that men will try to, to open, but God is the only one that can close it. I'm not saying that back. I'm saying that backwards. There will be places where you realize there are doors that were shut that God opened for you that no man could ever open. And there'll be areas where you've been working and trying to get some things done and those doors need to close, but you couldn't get it due. But God will come in and close those doors. Oh, come on. What I'm trying to say is you are uncommonly clothed and you're in the posture wearing the presence and the power of God, the anointing of God in your, your life that does things no man can do. Only God, only God, only God, only God. So when we encourage you to come out of a dejected place, come out of sadness, come out of mourning, <clears throat> when you hear us quote Psalm 24, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. When you hear us encourage you to aim your eyes up and to focus on him, when we hear you, when we when you hear us quoting that word, who is the king of glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty. The Lord God, mighty in battle. Lift up your gate, heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. The Lord of hosts. Do you understand who that is? That's us. We're the host. We are the host of the Lord. We are part of his holy regiment. We are part of his kingdom, his rule. He is our Lord and the Lord of all. And when we surrender to him as our Lord and Savior, we are the host. And he is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angel armies, the Lord of all the Lord God, all powerful and almighty. And guess what? We are uncommonly clothed with the privilege to have access to an unlimited, all powerful God. And that is our King of glory. Amen. Amen. So I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Enlarge your tent. Prepare the house of the Lord. For his glory to be released, for his glory to rest upon you, prepare, prepare, prepare. Lift your heads up and trust that God is making ways out of no ways. Why? Because he wants to be glorified in your life as you give him glory. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 So that was, I just wanted to encourage you that today you are uncommonly cold, uncommonly clothed. Give God glory. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so right now, quickly, let's take advantage of this moment. If there's anyone here that's listening at any point and you want to say right now, I want to be 
I want to remain uncommonly clothed. I want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. I want to be a part of the host. If he's the Lord of hosts, I want to be a part of the host. Well, I want to invite you to come into the kingdom of God and be a part of his His, his um, heavenly reign and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life today. And um, just pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess that I have sinned. I admit that I sinned. But today, I choose to yield to you as Lord of my life. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Make me new. I believe you are the Son of God and that you God raised Jesus from the dead so that I might have life in Christ Jesus today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and he is my Lord, the Lord of hosts, the King of glory. Father, fill me with your spirit Make me new. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. That's it. And what do we do from here? We continue together. We continue together. We continue to read the word together. We get, continue to pray together. We continue to build each other up in the things of God. We continue to love on one another. The word says, they will know that you are my disciple. How? By how you love one another. And we do that together. That's what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. You don't do it alone. You're not alone. You're never alone because we're all in this together. We are all uncommonly clothed with the power and the glory of God in our lives. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. God bless you. We're going to move into the next part of our service. This room will remain open. And we're going to have a time of worship and um, bask in the word of God, worship, and, and just listen to what's being said and spoken over you and receive it. And we love you and we'll talk to you soon. God bless.